Hey everyone, I'm back again with another video on mnemonics that I came across during my period studying for the step one exam. In this video, I'll be covering heart murmurs. Stay tuned. Now, before we get started, I like to make a disclaimer. Heart murmurs aren't something that you want to solely memorize. It's a concept that you have to truly understand. And for those that are having difficulty grasping the concept, I highly recommend a book by Leonard S. Lilly called The Pathophysiology of Heart Disease. It's a really great book for those that are having difficulty in any subject areas. You can pinpoint which chapter that will be beneficial to you. Now the mnemonics that I'll be presenting to you in this video are the ones that I found to be helpful and beneficial while studying for my step one exam. I have come across other mnemonics online related to heart murmurs, but I'm only gonna be presenting the ones that I personally found helpful. Um, all other mnemonics that I came across, I will be putting in the description box below. Now, the first mnemonic that I'll be presenting to you is the Ryle mnemonic, and this should help you pinpoint whether a murmur is originating in the right side of the heart or the left side of the heart. So when you're doing a question in the question stem, when it's related to heart murmurs, they will specify whether the heart murmur is accentuated or the volume of the heart murmur increases with inspiration versus expiration. So in the question stem, if they specify that the heart murmur increases in volume or is accentuated with inspiration, you know that the heart murmur originates on at the right side of the heart. So for instance, tricuspid regurgitation, tricuspid stenosis, pulmonic regurgitation, pulmonic stenosis. So those heart murmurs increase in volume with inspiration because they originate from the right side of the heart. Whereas heart murmurs that originate in the left side of the heart will increase with expiration. So those heart murmurs include aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation. So remember Ryle as right-sided murmurs increasing with inspiration and left-sided murmurs increasing with expiration. All right, for this next mnemonic, I have a bit of a typo in what I have written in the page in front of you. In front of the abbreviation for aortic stenosis, AS, there should be a D in front of it. So it should read as D-A-S is S-A-D. They're mirror images of each other, D-A-S and S-A-D. So the mnemonic is, damn, aortic stenosis is sad. Damn, aortic stenosis is sad. That should help you remember that complications of severe aortic stenosis include syncope, particularly on exertion, angina, and dyspnea on exertion. Another helpful tip for aortic stenosis is the rise and fall of the murmur intensity that you see in the picture diagram below. Aortic stenosis is often described as a crescendo-decrescendo systolic ejection murmur, and that can be also seen in the illustration below. And as you can see, the rising and falling in the volume of the murmur can look like a peak or the letter A in aortic stenosis. So the rising and falling and the peak of aortic stenosis murmurs and the letter A should help you correlate the two. Lastly, we have the regurgitative murmurs. There's Mitchell and tricuspid regurgitation, which are known as systolic murmurs, and aortic regurgitation, which is a diastolic murmur. Now, Regurgitation murmurs are often described in question stems as blowing murmurs. Um, now you can remember regurgitative murmurs as blowing with the correlation between regurgitation and vomiting. Regurgitation sometimes is considered vomiting and another phrase that people use to describe vomiting is blowing chunks. So regurgitation aka vomiting aka blowing chunks. Regurgitation murmurs are described as blowing murmurs. Regurgitation murmurs are typically described as high-pitched blowing murmurs and they will specify systolic or diastolic to help you identify that it's either aortic or mitral or tricuspid regurgitation. All right, that's all for part one of this video. If you guys are interested in learning about the various peaks and troughs of the jugular venous pulse 
curves, also known as juggling venous waveforms, click the link for part two of this video. Here I'll be discussing what the various peaks and troughs mean and how you can apply them clinically.